He's in jail right now. He's not doing well at all, and depression is setting in. You're entitled to have whoever you want to visit you when you're in jail, as long as they're on the list. Chris is alone in his cell for 23 hours a day. I need to see everybody again. This house is not complete with without anybody here. He never once cried. Could one of those visitors be someone that he had an affair with? He's checked on every five or ten minutes. He was my closest best friend. After confessed family killer Chris Watts was sentenced to five life terms, the immediate question became, well, where will he go next? It seems that we now know the answer to that question. CNN affiliate WITI reporting that Watts is being held at the Dodge Correctional Institute in Wapun, Wisconsin. That's about 70 miles from Milwaukee. The Department of Corrections describes it as an intake facility for male inmates before they are transferred to the prison while they will serve out the rest of their sentence. I want to bring in crime journalist Pat Lalama and Larry Levine, a former federal inmate whose time behind bars inspired him to become the director and founder of Wall Street Prison Consultants. Thank you both for joining me, Pat. I want to start with you. Does this surprise you that he's been transferred? No, not at all. It, it happens regularly. And I think in his case in particular, there are a lot of things to take into consideration. Number one, his safety. There is an obligation to try to put him in the most safe environment for someone uh, who's committed the kinds of crimes that he's committed. There are also medical concerns, psychological concerns. What skills does he have? Where might he be able to do a job? Uh, what kind of education might he want to pursue, classes? So uh, they take into consideration many factors before they decide where someone goes. All right, Larry, I want to bring you into the conversation. I want to put up a full screen for our viewers sort of describing this facility. First and foremost, the, the average population is about 1,600. You can see it on there on your screen. The rate of crimes um, that inmates have committed that were violent is right around 64%. About 3% are serving life sentences. The average age is uh, 36 years old. So I'm curious, does this bode itself, you know, to the to the safest, I, I mean, I don't know if you could say safest, but violence can occur in any facility. A am I right? Is this, this would be no exception with this type of well, demographic, if you will? This is a designation facility where they're going to evaluate him and determine where he's going to go. So other than maybe a group of cadre inmates who are maintaining the facility, nobody is staying there. Everybody is moving on somewhere. Perhaps people are getting ready to be released from Wisconsin DOC and they're sending them there as a release location. But everything Pat said is true. They could have done this same thing again in Colorado. They didn't have to move him out of state to do this. This is really an embarrassment for the Colorado Department of Corrections. It shows that they could not safely house him in one of their own institutions. And I believe that's because the impact of this case has reached so far into the people of Colorado that they're concerned about their own staff members possibly assaulting him or creating a circumstance, a door is left open, he's mixed with other inmates. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's look at James Holmes back in 2016. He's the guy that shot up the... Uh, movie theater in Aurora. Oh, yes. We there was a situation there where he got assaulted in, mm -hmm. I believe it was Cannon City, a secure facility, and it was determined that a staff member had made an error and another inmate was able to get to him. I really don't believe, I don't care where you send him in America, inmates have their own grapevine, their own way of communicating. I venture to say that there are probably hundreds of inmates at where he's at now that already know he's there. And if they have the opportunity, they're going to reach out and they're going to get him. Well, and that, that's sort of my next question. You, may, you said a point, you said that the impact in Colorado, uh, you know, it's, it's so widespread. But I, this has a, become a, a national, if not an international story. So, and he's going to go to another facility, and the well, inmates are, are going to know. Is that, am I right? Well, they will know. Let's put it like this. They moved James Holmes. He's in, I believe, in Pennsylvania. He's at a federal facility there. Mm -hmm. If the feds wanted to take him, they could have put him in ADX Florence, which is kind of underground, where they've got really, really high security federal inmates. They move inmates around between the feds and the state all the time. 
But ADX Florence is right there in Colorado. So again, a security concern. What they did by moving him out of state is limit the possibility of him being assaulted. Okay. But it's not going to eliminate it in any way whatsoever. All right, Pat, I want to bring you in this conversation. This is not your first rodeo. You've seen this happen before. I'm, I'm sort of curious as to, you know, what are the next steps for him? Is there any indication that we'll learn where he's going or will he go and then we'll find out? Well, my best guess is he'll go and then we'll find out. I doubt that's right. information that the state prison system wants to release to anyone. Right. I do want to remark uh, uh, about something I heard earlier that he's not doing well, that he's depressed. Now that was of course probably from when he was in jail. But if he's showing signs rather than prison when he was first arrested is what I'm saying. But if he is in fact now showing signs of depression, like the real world has crashed down in front of him, I don't think if anyone's hoping it's because he feels guilty. I doubt it for one second. I think it's the fact that he's got he got caught, he's trapped, he can't do what he wants to do, and uh, his life is basically over. But it's all about himself, not about anybody else. Yeah, we heard them say he has about an hour of, of free time out of his cell every day. Like you said, whether or not that was before he, he pleaded guilty, we don't know. But Pat Lalama, Larry Levine, thank you so much. We appreciate your input. Thank you. And